Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. I have not done a video like this in a while, so I'm very excited. We're going to read an article together because it is just too absurd not to, and I wanted to do an entire segment about it because this is really just the sad state of journalism in 2022, and I did not want to have to read it alone. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock video. And of course, if you want to check out my merch collection, you can go to dailywire.com slash Brett. So <laughs> this is a Pop Sugar article, came out yesterday. So this is still fairly new. It's still kind of catching fire on the Twitter webs, but the title is Fat People Have Sex Too. So why is it so hard to find contraception that works? Why is it so hard, guys? Why? Uh, the other title is How Fat Phobia Impacts Reproductive Health Care Post Row. So of course, we have to bring abortion to this because nobody has stopped talking about it. They are still upset. The summer of rage is apparently still going on, even though thankfully they didn't burn down as many buildings as BLM. They obviously did. They burned out a lot of pregnancy centers and it was absolutely just reprehensible and disgusting, but they did not rage as much as I was anticipating and worried about. So that's good. They're basically just sitting holed up in their houses, writing articles like this. Feels like I said, journalism in 2022. The comments are just fantastic. Some of them guys, I couldn't put on the show because they were just really mean. <laughs> like, I think you know what those comments would be about fat contraception, but... <laughs> They were just, I didn't feel comfortable, but you can go read them if you want. Uh, but I'm not going to do that on the show. Uh, but somebody said, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's because they're fat. Fat. Fat, is it? Yeah, actually it is. Somebody said, because condoms aren't cheap and readily available practically everywhere that isn't rural. You know, I kind of disagree with this because... I feel like they're in every gas station. Like you can literally get them everywhere. It is not difficult in 2022 to have safe sex. It really is not. Like, why are we even discussing this? Somebody said, just trying to be relevant in a world of irrelevance. Yes, exactly. They are just trying to create problems so that they can complain and further their own victim culture so that they can continue being fat, sad, and lazy and having other people fix their problems. Somebody said, it's happening. They're finally running out of stupid shit to write. Yeah, imagine like being in these writer's rooms and trying to, you know, figure out things that are oppressing them. Like the next thing we're going to see is that apparently fat people can't buy cars because the car manufacturers are discriminating them because the seats aren't big enough. But guys, let me save you the hassle of writing that damn article because my new partners at CarZing are going to make sure that every person is able to find and buy a car that fits their individual needs. So no oppression there. CarZing is an online car shopping website that works with over 25,000 dealers nationwide to help you find your dream car. They also partner with credit agencies, lenders, and dealerships so that you have everything you need before you even step into the dealership. Their mission is to make auto financing and shopping quick and easy while providing a modern, hassle-free way of shopping for your cars. And the best part is CarZing offers transparency to the max. You know your purchasing options before you even set foot into the dealership. And that is essential because if you've ever met a car salesman, you know that they'll take you for a ride. If you want to try them out and get shopping, go to carzing.com slash Cooper. Again, that is carzing.com slash Cooper. Like this service is so good. I don't even think the oppressed, victimized fat libs would have anything to say about it which is impressive for sure. Let's dive into the article. Here are two of the authors. One of them's name is Melanie and she is a queer writer in quarantine. Melanie, hi, I'm Brett. I just want you to know it's October of 2022. COVID is over. You can leave your house. I understand that you are very scared, but the world is okay. You are going to be fine. You can leave. Anyway, she writes for Pop Sugar, Real Simple, Refinery29, Apartment Therapy, uh, NPR, Men's Health Mags, uh, Hello Giggles, all very profound publications, obviously. Uh, this is the other writer, Nia Patterson. <laughs> Gotta feel mean. They, them, writing new adult fantasy romance. She is a queer NB goddess and neurodivergent. <laughs> I just want you guys to know what we're getting into. I just needed you all to be prepared. So if you're not excited yet, just here we go. So they start off with Roe v. Wade, obviously, because we have to politicize this as quickly as possible. Uh, and they talk about how in the months since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, many people have stepped forward to share their stories in order to help destigmatize abortion. But despite all of the important discussions happening in the SCOTUS decision's wake, there's one conversation that has gone vastly underreported, how the overturn of Roe v. Wade is disproportionately impacting people in larger bodies. That's what we're calling overweight people now. Number one, they're body positive. Number two, they just happen to be in larger bodies. And then they talk about how uh, certain types of contraception do not work for people that are more overweight, especially the hormonal birth control, because you would need a higher dosage. And it does not work because 
your body is in flux. Because when you are overweight, your hormones change. And as a result, a hormonal version of birth control just wouldn't be as effective. That is not something that you need a science degree to understand at all. They say research shows that people with a higher BMI are more likely to have lower HCG hormone levels at the beginning of a pregnancy, which is the hormone that pregnancy tests detect. So apparently, because birth control does not work, the only option for fat people is to use abortion as a form of birth control. So we're still at the beginning of the article, so get excited. Uh, But the article is basically arguing that we need abortions because it is fat people's only option for birth control, which is just ridiculous. Like, are they that moronic? Like, how about you try to live a healthier lifestyle? That would actually save two lives if you even care about that sort of thing. You and your potential unborn child that you would not have to abort because you would be able to use effective birth control. Also, the article literally contradicts itself in the first two paragraphs because they say, and I quote, as of right now, the only emergency contraception that is effective regardless of body size is the copper IUD, according to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. An IUD is not an emergency contraception. You can get it in and it lasts for five to 10 years. And apparently it works for overweight people. So why are we even writing this article? Your doctor should be able to say, hey, listen, I don't really think the pill is going to work for you. I don't think the hormonal IUD is going to work for you. But here is this great option that will work for your body. Why are we even having this conversation if there is literally something that works? Also, guys, understanding your cycle when you are fertile, understanding your hormones, that also is a very effective form of birth control. Also, newsflash, not having sex. If you do not have sex, you will not have to worry about this. So please be responsible and only open your legs when you are willing to have a child. It's quite simple. Take the necessary precautions. It's really not that difficult. It is 2022. Like that commenter said, you can literally find condoms in a gas station. And I can't believe that this is what I'm spending my life trying to teach people. The article continues and they say that fat phobia is obviously not new in the healthcare industry because fat people are apparently discriminated by doctors. And I'm guessing that it's because doctors tell them that they need to lose weight to be healthier. Guys, that's not discrimination. That is the doctor doing his or her job to protect you and help you. So then they have a few sections. Uh, The first one is how fat phobia shows up in healthcare. And they say that fat phobia is rooted in a sense of blame and presumed moral failing. Which really, I don't think so. I think people are just trying to help you live a better and healthier life. And the fact that we are glorifying being overweight and being unhealthy is utterly ridiculous and is just another example of how our society and Western civilization is quickly decaying. They then go on to why doesn't contraception work for all body sizes, which we touched on in the first paragraph. But if you have common sense, you can probably understand why. And then this is my favorite section. He said the unique challenges facing larger bodied people post Roe v. Wade. Here we go. Also, body size often intersects with race, particularly because structural racism contributes to higher BMIs. If you face racism, apparently you're going to be fat. (laughs) They're checking every single marginalized intersectional box so that nobody can have any argument against it. If I try to say anything to invalidate this article or the argument they're making, they immediately have some, well, we're a marginalized community. You can't talk to us about this. They will not respond to you with logic because they have basically created this protective wall around them where you cannot touch them because they are a protected class, because they are fat and they deal with racism and they're a woman and they're probably also trans and non-binary and all of that crap. They go on and they start quoting another PhD, Dr. Lindbergh, who apparently focuses on addressing the systemic disparities in sexual and reproductive health and rights, which have become increasingly under threat in this legal landscape. This doctor says women of color are more likely to be categorized as larger bodies, so these policies and practices risk becoming racist. Therefore, all of these concerns are much more likely to impact women of color. This includes health risks during pregnancy and higher morbidity rates related to delivery and in the months postpartum. That's another utter lie where they say, oh, so many black women die giving birth. Really? Like, no. I think Candace actually has a whole episode on that. You should go listen to it. So then they finish out the article by basically saying, how can you advocate for yourself to get better care? Newsflash, I don't think that they write this in the article, but you can ask for a copper IUD. (laughs) That's what we've learned from this article. What I've taken away is that one sentence in the second paragraph that disproves everything they have written, but obviously they don't want to talk about that. And then they finish out the article by saying, we need to have more conversations around discriminatory stipulations on medical devices and medications and urge the healthcare industry to develop inclusive options because the burden shouldn't only be on the patients themselves. It'll take much wider societal change to end fat phobia and ensure that all people can get the inclusive healthcare they deserve. I'm sorry. 
it is the patient's responsibility to also take accountability for their health. You cannot just show up and be ill and not taking care of yourself and just expect your doctor to immediately be able to fix everything. It does not work that way. Yes, they should be able to prescribe treatment and medication that might work, but you have to step up and take responsibility for your life and your health. If you are not doing that, there is nobody to blame except yourself. And the moment that you start taking responsibility, you will be so much happier. You'll be so much more empowered because this victim culture, it is killing you quickly. One, because it is morally and emotionally degrading, but also because apparently these people are just sitting around being fat and unhealthy and sad. And that's killing you faster than anything else. Hey, 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 I can't believe that you were about to click off of this video without liking it first. That was honestly rude. Be better.